things on our YouTube channel. So uh, feel free to share with your players and assistant coaches and anybody you think can get some uh, benefit from that. Um, I, I want to give out my email as well. If you want to send any uh, suggestions for topics down the road, it's uh, Gerard, G-E-R-A-R-D, uh, underscore, is it underscore? Yep, Gerard, G-E-R-A-R-D, underscore burn, B-Y-R-N-E, at fas.harvard.edu. So if you guys check the chat, it's posted in there right now. So uh, feel free, uh, you know, after the uh, webinar today to send us some ideas. And if you want to be on our mailing list, uh, you can email me your, your name and the program that you're affiliated with. And we will uh, we'll add you to our uh, mailing list so you can, we'll let you know when uh, the next one is. So let's get started. So I pulled uh, two clips from, two new clips from the uh, Redwoods Chaos game. I think one of the things that we're going to do next is uh, pull some games maybe from the last uh, uh, FIL World Championships. I know Joe Keegan has, um, has done some of that work as well and uh, looking at Team Canada versus uh, the U.S. team. So that's probably where we're going to go from a, from a defensive standpoint and um, as well as from an offensive standpoint with Coach Corrigan and Coach um, Hutchinson. And Coach Bergman today will be doing uh, some goalie play from some of our scrimmages uh, this fall, so this past fall. So here we go. We got the start of the possession. Uh, ball's being carried into an invert. And, you know, teams will play this stuff differently. And I'll, I'll talk about a drill uh, when we're done with the film part on the whiteboard behind me. But teams will play this stuff, this stuff differently. You, uh, I refer to a stack and whack, meaning as, um, uh, as Connor Fields comes off of this pick, this pick is right, you know, being planted, is that, Stack and whack means Sergio will be right behind this offensive player. And as the offensive player carries by, he will, he'll whack him with his stick to try to force him to go wide and allow the defender, this is Matt Landis, to continue to maintain his matchup. Um, sometimes they just stack. Sometimes they'll show aggressively at that angle, you know, to force him to run around him. So um, I'm not a huge fan of that, but I know there's different ways of doing this. Some, some teams and some coaches are much more militant about how they play two-man. Basically, it comes down to you're either switching or you're going to do everything you can to help your guy get through. So you can have really simple terminology, which, whether it's switch or stay or um, whatever language you come up with with your team. You obviously want to practice that language. So the um, – so like anything else, you have to practice the terminology and uh, what I would call the action within action. So that's the action within the action here right now is this two-man that's taking place. So in this game, clearly the Redwoods wanted to kind of stack. You can see Sergio is about to uh, crumble this guy, which uh, forces Landis to go under that whole pile. I don't know how that's not a penalty, but that's for conversation for another time. So obviously by stacking, this allows Landis to go under that. But the, the problem with that is, in my mind, and again, it may not be everybody's mind, is the space between Landis and Connor Fields now, which is pretty massive, which means you have no ball pressure. And whatever's happening here, you know, whether it's picks or action that could confuse your defense, whatever's happening there, that gives him time when there's that much of a gap. So that's why I'm not a huge fan of, of stack or stack and whack, but I know that I think I'm in the minority on, on that. So that's what stack looks like and try to ignore the cross check that just took place. So now you got, you got ball pressure and from, from a defensive standpoint, you got, you got, you know, not a great job here. You know, I'm a big fan of, of sideways presentation here, here you got a sideways presentation from Eddie Glazner. You got a sideways presentation from Apple. You got a, uh, this is Carol Lunas, who's, who's in a really good spot, 
But the problem is he he's, can potentially get sealed by Miles Thompson here. And even though you don't see Carol Lunas's man responsibility, you know that you can, when you're in this situation, you could be vulnerable to a cut or this guy hunting this space, which could lead to a skip pass here. So, you know, the lack of ball pressure or really aggressive ball pressure means Connor Fields can survey 180 degrees of the field. And then depending on how you're going to play this defensively, whether Eddie Glazner is going to become your slide guy or Garrett Eppel is going to become your slide guy, this is Glazner, this is Eppel, are you going to come down and, and slide from Carolinas? Ball pressure becomes so critical uh, because ball pressure, consistent, appropriately aggressive ball pressure covers every nearly every mistake that you could possibly fathom. So that's where we are. Uh, you saw the two men that just took place there. Producer Ted, is there a question? Good. All right. So now you're coming here. You know, Landis is not checking a lot. You have Garrett Apple, who's clearly established himself as the slide man. We're gonna we'll call him we'll call him S right here. You know, S is our slide guy. You can see, you know, Carol Lewis is doing a good job of coming down to support on Miles Thompson because Miles Thompson is trying to figure out: Do I just sit in this space? Do I move over here? Do I dive? Do I come out? You know, he's really smart as far as you know, kind of minimizing his movement and try, but trying to keep Apple engaged. It shows how important Carol Lewis is in this situation to play in really good team defense. Because Garrett Eppel, our slide guy right here, is he's kind of in no man's land, meaning he's only doing one thing right now. And he's kind of perm permanently in that role. But without Carol Lewis's help, um, he wouldn't be able to do his role right now. What you're not seeing is whatever this guy, this offensive player is not in screen. He's not – He's not making Carolinas pay a price for that. And then lastly, you can see Jack Neer is in a support role here. He's going to help in the skip lane as Connor Fields gets up in here. And then you also need Sergio, who cross-checked that guy to the ground, to get back up into this area. You know, so I think one of the reasons why we're doing these webinars is not just to kind of talk about defense and goaltending and offense, but also to help you maybe think about how you watch film with your guys. My, my personal mentality is if you find two or three really good clips, it pretty much covers everything that you would like. So you don't have to deconstruct the full game, but you can find one clip and, and rip it apart like the Kennedy assassination, and you'll find a lot of good teaching in there. So, you know, question or a problem? Yeah, Coach Burr, just a question for you. Would you ever consider having the short stick D midi who's stacked and whacked roll up ball side to be coma in case the attack when rolls underneath? What um, is the negatives of that? Yeah, you know, so the question is, we can get back to the yeah. telestration screen. Yeah. Hold on. Oh, there I am. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, so I think the question was, I'm going to get out of here. So I think everybody knows what the point we're making right now. Fields is working his way up to the island, and Landis is, you know, light ball pressure. So the question is, do you have Sergio, after Sergio did what he did, do you have him come up here, you know, and, and be, you know, help be a deterrent if, uh, the fields inside rolls and comes back into that space or have him come, have Sergio come here. You know, I think, I think a lot of teams play that way. They like to come, you know, cross cage here. So this would be your, your coma slide. If Sergio gets to the back pipe, he sees his man, circles over. And if that happens and not going from Eddie Glazner or, or Apple, that that's clearly a way of doing it. And I think that's, often the predominance with which teams play um, inverts or, or matchups like this. I, 
It's not how I teach or coach, uh, but that's clearly a way of doing it. And it, it means you're just rotating a little bit differently. So if, if Sergio goes from here, Connor Fields rolls away, you know, he throws it to Sergio's guy, and now you have, you know, likely this guy coming down to help. So there's, that's definitely – there's other ways of doing that for sure. All right, so now you have, you know, Connor Fields working his way up there. He gets up to the island. And Eppel, you know, to his credit, is staying in this role. But now when this becomes two-man, Again, much like the, the lack of ball pressure for, for Landis, look how long this approach is. That's a long way. Talked about this. This is Miles Jones here. Miles Jones is doing a really good job of pulling Carolunas away. You know, again, some teams may go from Carolunas. So here's here's Apple, and here's Carolunas. So we'll we'll. Just to make it clear for everybody, here's Apple. We'll call him E. And here's Carolunas. We'll call him K. You know, the, the two ways to play this situation is three ways. Apple is your slide guy. Carolunas is your slide guy. And the third way is neither is your slide guy. You're just going to let this matchup play out. But this is a really good pick by Miles Thompson at the same time as Miles Jones fades away from Connor Fields, really putting Carolinas, I don't know what their rules were about playing, but by pulling Carolinas away, it gives Fields the opportunity to get to the middle of the field. And he's, I don't know, 13 yards right now. So you can see because of Apple locking into that role, he just, he flies out. He sees that contact. And this is, this is a really important moment for, for high school coaches or youth coaches or club coaches and I say it to my Harvard guys all the time is you better have ball pressure if you have two people committed to the ball. Because if you don't, this guy has everything. He has everything that he wants. Connor Fields has everything. He has the ability to step in and shoot. He can transfer, can skip, skip, shoot. And, and, and more importantly, he can throw back. And this is, this is the real pressure right now. The fact that Eppel made the decision that he made, and this, this, became, this is something that you can teach your young guys. You know, the fact that he looks, I would call this guy the flag waver, stick straight up in the air. If he took that stick, if he took that stick and pointed it at, directly at Connor Fields, he'd be on his hands. So you can see the difference of, of no ball pressure versus ball pressure. Guys get caught up in trying to deflect this pass, in my mind, instead of trying to effect it. So deflect versus effect. And I'm a big fan of effect and, or affect. I'm not sure whether it's affect or effect, but I think you got the point I'm trying to make. And so if he throws this ball back right now, this, this feels like a goal. But because – Apple is coming so aggressively, you know, you're going to see here in a second that Eddie Glazner has got to be prepared to leave his man. He's getting pinned behind him. You're going to see him react here in a second. He realizes that if that ball gets thrown back there, that he's going to have to go. I would call that in film an OF moment, O expletive moment. Like you could see him. A second before, he was trapped underneath him. Watch 41 is standing up straight, and he's trapped underneath him. And, oh, that's an OF moment. So when you're coaching your guys, when you're watching film, these OF moments are – they're good teaching. It helps you teach don't get caught standing straight up. Don't get caught flat-footed. You're never sure what your opponent's going to do, whether he makes a really good play or a, or a bad play. And the more you're prepared in this athletic stance right now, the less OF moments that you have, right? So, so we got to switch off of the two-man ball moves. And now you got another two-man over here. So throw-throw, what we call a throw-throw. And now 
you got a guy, you know, isolated two on two over here. And, you know, what you want to see from your off ball defenders is, you know, what kind of reaction, what kind of movement are you seeing here? What kind of preparation here? What kind of reaction here? Because the ball is here. And if you are so fixated on your man, if this becomes a really good dodge or a really good approach, you've created this temporary two on two over here. And if, if you make a bad approach or make a bad slide decision, you're going to be under a lot of pressure. So when you're, when you're talking to your guys about team defense, you're talking about approaches, you're talking about ball pressure. Where are my hands? How are my hands and feet working together? Am I prepared for my next responsibility? So critical to team defense. So you get a little, what I would call that move, an at stutter split, where he squares the guy up, stutter split. You're seeing this is now, uh, uh, again, it varies by team. Different teams slide different ways. You could slide cross cage from Landis. You could go from this guy who's in between. You could go from this guy who's on the crease. So I, I believe they're going from this crease guy here. So this is Eddie Glazner. And what you want to see happen in the next second or two as this dodge happens, a couple of things. This guy's because he's probably going to try to run here and try to come underneath. So right now he's heading in this direction. What you want to see is from Sergio, this is Sergio right here. I want to see Sergio turn and orient himself relative to the dodge. I want to see these guys pull in and pull down. And then Landis, who's got responsibility for the guy at X, you know, where's this guy going to go? Is he dive to his spot and now he can play out that split? So there's a lot going on. And you better, you better do it well and quickly here in the next second or two. So here comes this dodge. Sergio does a really good job here. You can see him. He's evaluating this dodge. You know, he's, he was here, and now he's looking at that. And if he does a really good job, I'd like to try, have him try to find that guy. So here you go. He's moving like that. So right now, he's doing a really good job. Glazner is your slide guy. He's trying to stay in the, in the classic ball, yourself, and your man triangle. Still relative to this day. 1970s term that still makes sense. Ball, you, man triangle. Let me draw that. That was a terrible looking triangle. My algebra teacher at Chaminade just rolled over in his grave. But you can see what he's looking at there. And then you're starting to see, I think this is Carolunas or Apple who's coming down here to, to help. So important. All right, so they come down and help. Sergio stops doing a great job. And you're going to see the price of this in a second. That ball, you know, one of the things I like to teach is this ball is running toward that direction that Sergio can, you know, find his man here, but also can sneak a peek at that guy. This guy's more dangerous than this guy. They're both dangerous, but he's more dangerous in my mind. Um, Carol Lunas could have, could have pulled down and helped here. He's worried about a guy who's not even in the frame, right? Glazner is now looking away, trying to find his guy, right? Trying to find his man during all of this. So you can see, and particularly at this level, but even at any level, you know, and I say this to my defenders all the time, that the, the, the difference between good defense and great defense is about the size of this computer screen. That's a skip lane, that's an approach, that's the head of the stick, get into a guy's hands. So Glazer starts looking away, but just losing that guy for a second or two. I want you to watch this because it's really subtle. So everybody's there. Sergio's looking in. Apple's coming down to help. Landis is on the back pipe, right? You don't feel like you have to go. Glazer's still looking at this. 
He's looking at this dodge. Sergio stopped looking over his right shoulder. This is Sergio. Sergio could be helping with that guy. Glaze is in a good stance. But watch this subtle play. Him looking away there becomes that combined with no ball pressure by Jack Near. That gap, right? The difference between good defense and great defense. It's the size of a computer screen. He's not on his hands. He's a little bit away. Glazner gets caught looking the wrong direction just for a split second, and there's the space that Josh Byrne cuts into. The difference between good defense and great defense about that amount of space. So watch what happens. Glaze is looking the wrong way, and now you end up giving, you know, a pretty good shot to a Canadian finisher inside. You know, that wasn't that much space. That wasn't that much of a window, but enough. And, you know, I say to my players all the time is you're not preparing for the bad teams you play. You're playing for the best players and the best teams that you play. So you want to be good at that. So here we have an end line restart. And, you know, the Albany guys, you know, this is Miles Thompson picking up the ball with Connor Fields. You always have to be prepared for the one-handed wrap or fish hooks or, you know, pick and pop stuff. So, and you definitely want to, when you play a team where one guy picks up the ball and another guy runs at him and tells me to give me a ball, you want to make sure you're, you're, you want to be prepared for some end line action right now because they're clearly, when, when a guy is demanding the ball now, you, you want to, that should be a little bit of a tell for you. So a little mental note for you. So here it comes. And so right off the bat, this is, this is going to be a fish hook right here, what we call a fish hook cut. And I don't know if they execute it, but this is Miles Thompson. You have a lefty and a righty. So being prepared for fish hook cuts is really important. What a fish hook cut is, is that this guy will run up here. And he, when he gets up here, he's waiting, will wait for his defenseman to look away, and he'll fish hook cut back. And I think. In this game, there were a couple of those. So lefty, and he'll carry up into this area, try to avoid ball pressure, and then play that out. I think I definitely, you know, we definitely gave up a game in the goal on this in the 2014 NCAA playoff game at Hofstra against Albany. So um, you know, I have that in my nightmares. So that's something that could happen, or it becomes too bad. And, and what, what good teams will do here is that they'll stay high with these guys here and try to isolate open space here. So whether it's a fish hook or not, you're going to create some open space for guys to carry the ball or feed the ball into. So you can see, you can see Miles Thompson is looking back because he's thinking about this as a fish hook. It doesn't happen because Connor Fields goes right-handed. So now he goes right-handed, and this is really poor two-man play. I hate to call Sergio out. Uh, he's remade himself into a two-way maybe here. I hate to tell you, he didn't play a lot of defense back in the day. So end line starting, and here's the problem is right now. He's so far away. I don't know who 92 is, but he's so far away from Connor Fields He's basically taking a shortcut. And he just, in my mind, he decides he's going to switch here. Landis is fighting to get through this pick. So I don't know if he communicated here, but here's the problem. He calls a switch. And I said this earlier before, when there's no ball pressure on a switch, this guy has everything. He could run right at Landis. Excuse me, he could run right at Sergio. The fight to get to the front. And then he'd have two people chasing him. Or they can have what happens here, which is a throwback. So, so he decides to go. You can see the defense is looking away. They're pulled high because the offense is doing a really good job. Right? And now... 
and I said this on the earlier episode, they're creating this temporary three on three by boxing all these people up in here. You see, this is Glazner right here, who's, you know, who is the slide guy. He's, he's evaluating whether he has to come in this direction. But because of this aggressive switch with no ball pressure, this throwback is clean and it's on the stick. And now this becomes a, this, uh, an inflection point within the defense. And this is Apple right here. So we got Apple and Glaze. Apple's decision to me is a couple. He can tell Landis to chase this pass. He can take this guy, fast play it, or try to get there with ball pressure, or slow play it to buy time to, for, for guys, for Glazner to get to uh, Miles Thompson there. So, but because of the, what happened here in the circle and, and the incorrect nature of that, Eppel and Glazner are in a tough spot. And so you'll see what happens here. So Eppel decides to fast play it, which means Glaze is going to be a little bit late. And he, he makes a really good approach, gets to hands, but the ball's already gone with, with this level of skill. And now you need your goalie to make a great, great play. So, you know, I think, you know, if you're, if you're, you're, if you have, you know, the takeaways I want you to, to take from that is how important language is, you know, whatever you use with your team, the, the, the clarity of, of your rules in doing this and practicing it. And so I'm going to go to a quick drill here. And uh, before we start, were there were any questions pop up? I couldn't see. Okay, it looks like a cow zone. Uh, you know, like a Long Island cow zone, or you know, someone said my triangle looked like a cow zone. Made me think of uh, Mama Chichi. I was in Levittown where I grew up, but that's a whole other story. So let's talk about uh, defending two man and, and practicing it. Whoa, moving around. It's like uh, NYPD blue here. Um, so so a couple of things, and then we'll we'll go on the on the board here. The um, make sure you, there's clarity of your rules, whether you are a switch and get through team or a stack team or a stack and whack team or an aggressive hedge team. Those are basically your four, your four ways, your stack and whack, your, your switch and get through, uh, your hedge. You know, stack, stack and whack, aggressive hedge or switch and get through. It's basically your four ways of playing it. Uh, so whatever it is, make sure that you are articulating it with, with your guys. And then um, you gotta drill the scenario. So we'll, we'll do that on the board here in a se second. You can't talk about two man and you can't just show film on two man. You have to break it down to its granular, granular elements so that you guys can recognize what it looks like from a practice or a drill standpoint so that when they go to the game it doesn't feel like something that's foreign so drill the scenarios and, and drill them from you know two man on the wing in your classic uh, pairs do it from x in your classic invert do it in, from top center almost like a basketball play so do it where it kind of reflects uh, where you guys will do it on the field. And then practice the language. You know, switch or get through, over, under, whatever you're using, make sure you're practicing the language. So I'll, I'll show you, um, you know, it's not, it's not a cool drill, and it's not something that, uh, you know, it's just a simple thing. So what, what I'll typically do when I'm introducing two men with our guys is I'll just create some groups of four all over the all, all all over the field. You know, if I have 16 people in my group, I'll have you know four groups going on. So here you have, you know, here's a top center example. 
Right? So here's, here's three different examples. Here's a top center, here's a wing corner, and here's X, right? And so you can, um, and then you just rotate guys. So from here, I'll get, you know, this guy will have the ball, you know, this guy's his off ball partner, and we'll, they'll just perpetually practice two man within their group. And these guys will each, maybe each group gets two minutes. And here's another group on the corner. Here's another group, right, top center. And, and then they'll switch roles. So here this guy has the ball. This guy comes down, sets a pick. This guy goes, you know, you get a switch or get through. Guy goes over the practice, going over the pick because of the way the dodge was. Practice going under the pick. That way, the guy comes out, it rolls out. This guy pops behind the ball. He chases back. He throws him a pass. And now this guy rolls up in here and then flashes back. This guy might refuse the pick. So you can practice pick refusal, meaning, hey, this guy's trying to set a pick here. See if you can get the defenseman to look at the pick and then refuse it. So all you're doing is you do it for maybe 60 seconds and then they change roles. So you're practicing language, you're practicing footwork. And again, this could be all of your defensemen and D middies, right? This group over here, that's more of your kind of classic pairs shape where you'd have, you know, four people over here, four people over there. Now, you know, this guy throws down, you know, throw down, pick down. Now this guy's coming over it. You can practice this guy getting through, practice a switch, practice defending the slip. Now, and then you're just, you're just doing that. And then these guys are practicing being on the ball and off the ball. And it's just, it's perpetual. And now you're getting some sneaky stick skills out of that rep as well. Because they got to they gotta roll back, throw back. Same thing here. I don't like doing traditional, conventional defensive uh, sticks drills. So I try to have my guys play in the role of the offensive players. So you got one pair here at X, one pair here at the corner, one pair top center. This is you know situations you see in a lot of substitution things where they're trying to trap an offensive midfielder down. And now, you know, this guy, these guys might come from here. And now he tries to set a pick here. And now is he going under? Is he going over? Is it a switch? He gets here, he rolls back, he pops behind the ball and does all of that. Yeah, Coach Brown, we have a good question for you here. Will, will your rules change on playing picks depending on where the ball is in these groups? No. I, 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 like, I like being, you know, maybe a little bit relative to an offensive midi or a face-off guy in this situation. You see this a lot, maybe a little bit. My, my philosophy is I don't like to give up easy goals. And, you know, a lot of times if you have hard and fast rules on there, you can give up goals like we just saw almost in that clip that we just saw from the Redwoods and, and Chaos game. So uh, I, I, I typically don't, don't change. I like simplicity and consistent, consistency and clarity. But, I, you know, listen, you know, at the high school level, you know, you guys start, you typically start, you know, practice in early February, you have two weeks, and then your first scrimmage, and then a game, it's hard to, to practice all these scenarios. So I would think simplicity would, would trump any sort of fear. But, uh, but I know like a lot of teams have a lot of rules relative to getting trapped or playing two man, you see much more stack and stack and whack than, than, than switch and get through. But so you can see, and you can have another group over here on the wing. This could be another group of, of four people over here from, from a wing situation. So that's a simple drill of how to do that. And I think I'll give you one example of how to make an adaptation in this and, and adding some, some people. So here we had this group and this is your classic kind of pairs shape. And you can add people. You can, if you're a crease sliding team, you can add, you know, here where maybe the situation is, hey, this guy, uh, you know, um, comes, sets a pick, right? They both go with the carry, much like just happened on that clip here. And he throws back, oops, he throws back to him, and then this guy rotates there. So you can do, there, you can add, you can have a 2v3 drill. Two offensive guys, three defensive players. You can add a fourth and a fifth guy. If you're an adjacent sliding team, this guy comes down, sets a pick, 
he comes off of it. Excuse me, he comes, sets a pick. Guy comes off of it. He's getting to the middle of the field. If you're a crease lining team, you can come from him. If you're an adjacent sliding team, you can practice coming from him. So you can, you know, obviously the opposite way is true here. Set a pick, comes off of it, rotate from him. So now you have seven people in the drill, two offensive players, two defensemen who are off, off, off the ball, and now you got multiple other people practicing some of the reads that they have to do. So, you know, I think there, there's so many different ways to skin the cat. I, I, I'm trying to, you know, present – a little bit about what I feel and what I think, but I also know that, that other people do things different ways. And the, the, the lesson I'd like to impart is how critical it is in two-man uh, to have ball pressure, how important it is to have really simple language, how essential it is to drill the, 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 the decisions within the bigger decision or the action within the bigger action for your guys so they can see that it's smallest component so that when you start building up and build out from there and or whether you show film from your own season or a college season or a pro game they can see it making sense you know within within the you know the the, the scope of the big picture and so practice the language make up drills when you're watching film of your team and you get to a situation this is the way i think about things and I see us not doing something, I just immediately go, I don't want to make a small sided drill that teaches that. And I start with showing them the big picture of what happened in the last game. We didn't do this well. And as a result, here's a small group drill to isolate and show how important it is. And uh, I think if you, if you have that mentality and you're watching film of your own team and you pick 10 things out, you can come up with 10 little small drills that that if you did for three minutes like this, you know, in 10 minutes, I can go four different locations and each guy's going to get seven or eight uh, big little situations and switch and get through decisions and slide decisions in a short period of time. So uh, you guys got my email. Um, Producer Ted's going to be up here in, in, at 345. He's going to be, uh, he's going to be starting his presentation on, on, on goalie play. Again, all these are archived on our YouTube channel. Uh, Producer Ted will, will type that address in our uh, in our uh, in the chat area and email us any questions or comments or suggestions. And we're going to try to do as many of these over the next couple of weeks and, and months uh, as we patiently wait uh, the return to normalcy. And I hope everybody's safe. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, Ted Bergman's going to be on in seven minutes. Thank you.